All right, hosses, welcome back. And in this tutorial, what I want to do is I want to show you guys how to add collision detection, really simple collision detection. So let me run this real quick. So before we made a couple objects and they fell down, but now they're going way down into no man's land. What we want to say is, you know what? Actually treat the edge of your iPhone or iPad as the boundary. So whenever you hit the bottom, you bounce off it like normal instead of just, you know, passing through it. And I'll also show you guys how to change the bounciness or elasticity. So you can either make those squares as bouncy as you want, or you can make them not bounce at all, but uh, yeah, whatever you want. So the only behavior we added right now is gravity. The other ones that we're gonna add are gonna look really similar to this. So let's add collision detection, which is pretty much recognizing the bottom or the boundaries of your iPhone screen. So I'll just make the perimeter called boundaries. And you want to set this equal to UI collision behavior. Now this, we can actually just copy these items. So collision behavior means recognize when you're touching something, when you're coming in contact with another object. Now for the items, of course, we can just copy these because those are the items we want to use. Those are the only items we have actually. Now, if you take that boundaries property, which is the collision behavior, you can call a method called translate, translates reference bounds into boundary. In other words, it gets, look at this. The reference view is just the self view. What does that mean? The reference is just the entire screen whether it's your iPhone screen or iPad, whatever. So instead of saying, okay, we're gonna give you the left and the right and the bottom and the top and you have to calculate a whole bunch of stuff. If you just say translate the reference bounce, which is that screen into the boundary, it's gonna say, okay, as your boundary, just use the edges of the screen. It's really incredibly simple. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool way to do stuff. And you just need to set this equal to true to, I don't know, kind of verify it or whatever. So after this, of course, these behaviors are just set up. We're just setting this, them up right now. But in order to actually add them to our project or our screen, we need to call the animator. And we need to add a behavior in whatever that behavior's name was. So the collision detection behavior was named boundary. So let's paste that in there. And now check out what happens whenever we run it. Pretty sweet. So now they recognize not only the bottom, but if we were to take these and try to bump them up against the sides or the top, they would recognize their boundaries based on this reference view, which is the entire screen itself. So pretty sweet. We now have some really simple collision detection. Now, another thing that I want to do is show you guys real quick how to change the bounciness of them. Because as you guys can see, whenever we run this, okay, they bounce a little bit. They have some default bounce or elasticity, but let's say we wanted to have them bounce a little bit more. Maybe we were saying, um, making an app called like rubber blocks. I don't know, that's pretty dumb, but whatever. So, elasticity, I think I might've actually spelled that right. All right, so I'll just say, I'll just name this one bounce. And this is UI dynamic item behavior. And again, we're just gonna copy these. These are the objects that we wanna apply the behavior to. Now, the only property that we need to apply bounce is elasticity. Now, the value of this is just gonna be how strong or how weak your bounce is. So I'll just give it um, 0.5 for now, which is kind of average, I think. So this changes the elasticity. And of course, anytime we want to actually apply this behavior to our animator, add behavior, and it is called bounce. So again, just setting it up, setting up all the parameters and adding it to our game or whatever it is. So now, I don't even know if you guys can tell on my screen recorder since the frame rate, rate is kind of weird, but if you did notice, they did bounce a lot more than that default. 
So there you go. So now you understand the basics of pretty much using UI Kit Dynamics. What you have to do is you need to create an animator object, which is an instance of UI Dynamic Animator. And this object allows you to pretty much apply physics like, -like animations to objects. And then you have to set up the different behaviors, the different animations you want to do, and then add them to the animator. Simple enough, easy, wheezy, cheesy. All right, so um, in the next tutorial, I think what I'm going to do is we're going to start using user interaction. In other words, whenever I run this right now, it just animates and I can just sit back and watch it. But what if I actually want to interact with these? What if I want to touch it, move it around? swipe my finger and it goes in some direction. I mean, all games use some kind of user interaction. So we're going to be learning that in the next video. It's going to be sweet. I'll see you then.